Hey everybody, <laughs> I hope you can hear me. Uh, people will join in as we as they realize that I'm on. I am coming to you live from the cornfield with my friend Tim Hobbs, who is a, would you say that you are a hobbyist corn farmer? I'm a hobbyist corn farmer. I'm a master miller, which I raise and grind corn into meal and other products. And that's our primary purpose is to raise heritage corn. And you're a former teacher, obviously. Former teacher, retired. I mean, it's not obvious, but... <laughs> yeah. If anyone watched the video that I did in season one with Tim, uh, please go back and watch that if you haven't, because I, I shot a whole video with Francis, his wife, and their whole operation. We had, we had food. They gave us... We went to the corn mill and, and saw all of this. He also works on the mill. Good morning, Hallie. Good morning, Faithful Flowers. Good morning, Island Gardener. Um, he works on the grist mill and keeps it all going. How old is that mill? Well, the mill that we use uh, in the big mill is, was 1837. Wow. It's uh, been there a long time, before the, way before the Civil War, and it was it stopped in about 1960s when they shut it down. Uh, we have regenerated it back to working condition and uh, grind corn on it. And, of course, to get the kind of corn we wanted, we had to raise our corn. Good morning, Eric. I think you might find this interesting. Eric has a farm. Great. Um, Carolyn is a huge fan. I'm just going to tear that little thing. <laughs> uh, so, when when I was here before, Tim was Tim was ta Tim is an old friend of mine from my hometown, and so is his wife. And so I was just uh, there last night. They fed me all this southern food. It was fantastic. Um, and when we did the the, the video originally. It was because I had just been to the National Heirloom Expo and, and I was learning a lot about uh, GMO corn and GMO uh, seeds and, uh, and Tim was growing this heritage corn that uh, was non-GMO and we came out to the field. It's not this field, it's a different field mm -hmm. now and we're going to talk about why we're not in that field. Right. Uh, we're in this field and he was growing, what was the corn you were growing before? Hickory King. Hickory King and uh, we also have some of it here. Right. And uh, I just shot a little video. Good morning, Travis. I just shot a little video of um, of the difference between the corn. Do you still have those? Yes. Oh, okay. So this is the this is the new heritage corn, and he's going to talk about where he got the seed and what it is all about. Yeah, this is uh, Thomas Jefferson developed this type of corn. Uh, like a lot of early farmers, they did a lot of cross pollinating. <laughs> and uh, produce different corn Let's for different reasons. Here. I'm gonna move out of the sun so you're not in okay. the sun. Okay, move that way. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let's go over this way. Okay, now you're not in the sun. All right. Okay, you talk about it. So he developed it and it was raised on his farm. Back up a little. And uh, so it's called Gorski corn. That's the common name for it. The other call is Thomas Jefferson corn. And if you look at the corn on it real close, it has a real small kernel. And when it dries, it looks just like what you would see in a pumpkin seed or a gourd seed corn. Very thin with a little tail on it. And that's where the nickname come up from. It's high in sugar, which makes it a real sweet corn. And we've had this summer for sweet corn. And it made the best grits and the uh, cornmeal because of the sugar content. Back in the early days, they made whiskey out of it. <laughs> because it was a high concentration of sugar. And that's, well, that's what, what alcohol is, that's right? Sugar? Is. It's sugar. So, and this is what we started raising last year, and this is our first year for uh Well, uh, tell them how you got the first little bit of it, the well, seed. Well, uh, a gentleman was visiting up in Williamsburg, and they were showing the demonstration about and talking about this corn, and he had a bowl full of seed. And the gentleman there decided that he would take a handful of it and bring it home and planted it and he started raising enough to where he got enough of it that he could plant a big field of it over years and that's how we got some of the seed from him and basically that's what well, last year we planted enough to get seed to plant this field this year we're going to grind some of this we've eaten it grind it and then we'll save enough of it to plant at least five acres of it if it works out good and have more of this particular corn well, my understanding was always if you if you were either growing uh, corn for grinding, you know the varieties for grinding, or it was the sweet corn that you eat, the uh, 
fresh, mm -hmm. uh, was a completely different variety. But you're saying you get both out of these corns. Right. The early people that developed these corns wanted to raise two types of corns, basically. We raise field corn for our animals, which is usually some type of yellow corn, and the white corns were used primarily for foods. So they eat it when it was in the milk stage for cream corn, corn on a cob, and then they'll let it dry in the fall, and then we pick it, shell it, and take it to a mill and have it ground for their grits cornmeal. And tell them about the, the milk stage on the corn. Well, milk stage means that the corn is soft. This is still in the milk stage, and you can actually stick your thumb in it and it gets real juicy. If I can tear it open, you can see it. So this is just going out, so it, it'd be harder to eat as far as making yeah. uh, a corn, fresh corn out of it. Yeah, and the other one? This one is called Hickory King, and it always identifies it has eight rows on it and two spacings. So you see a two ear row spacing here and another two row. This is a heritage corn. And it's a very big ear corn as far as the length of it. And it also is called a flint corn because it is very, very hard. And it made a really good cornmeal and really good grits. So this is primary what we raised in the South. This is one of the versions that was really important to the farmer because of this uh, stuff that this corn had in it. It had a lot of sugar in it. And it also was a corn they could keep and make good meal products out of. I was just going to say, I saw Carolyn's comment. Yes, I'm sorry, I did not. I had a little live stream yesterday saying where I was going to be today, and I did not mention that when we started. We are standing, and I'm sorry, we are in a cornfield, like I said, <laughs> and I'm trying to hold the camera, the, the phone. We are in Bonacqua. Show me your t-shirt. I love Bonacqua, and it is a beautiful community in uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, in, in, we're in Dixon County right Dixon now. County this right field now. is in Dixon County, and we're also in Hickman County. But uh, tell them about Bonacqua, Tim. Well, Bonacqua started out as a word. Bonacqua means good water. There were sulfur springs there. They came out in about the 1860s, and they built three hotels. The first two burned. The last one had 105 rooms, and people would travel in by train and spend the summer there to drink the water to cure things like kidney stones, bladder problems, liver problems because of the sulfur in the water. And as travel came more popular, cars came about, the business of being able to travel by train went down and the hotel kind of fell in despair like a lot of them in Middle Tennessee and other places did. Yeah. Is that why I notice even in your house, when I turn on the water, it smells a little like sulfur? We have sulfur in our well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we don't, uh, we can drink it and it's not as strong as what was there at the springs in Bonacqua, which is just a, uh, probably half a mile from our house, but uh, we don't use it for nothing but uh, for yard work, washing clothes, and our other services. We get all our water out of a spring that's been on the property ever since uh, for the past 300 years when people settled there. Well, if you go back, and I'll post the link when I get back to wherever we're going. Uh, we stopped by the spring. I mean, I mean, we stopped. We went up mm -hmm. to the creek where they get their water, and. Uh, you could see, and they and they actually have a cave there beside the creek, and that's what they used as their refrigerator, right? Right. And you that, said it's always 55? It's always 55 degrees in that little cave. It's called a, a blowing cave because it's got a vein of air behind it and the water source is behind it, so it blows out 55 degree cold air, and they kept it as their refrigerator. They would take and put their milks and stuff in there to keep cool, and then in the wintertime, you could go in there and it's still 55 degrees. So it, uh, it served two purposes. Uh, one, if the, my dogs, when they get cold, they go in there and, and lay in the cave when it gets real cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, why, why don't you tell them, let's move a little bit more. I want you in, in the shade. Uh, tell them about when you're, when is this ready for harvest and, and what happens then? Well, it'd be about the end of October, 1st of November. We have to have usually two freezes on our corn. And what that does is it dries it out. It pulls the moisture out of the corn. Uh, most farmers that are row crop farmers are starting in a lot of places already shelling their corn. They'll take it and put it in bins and they'll put dryers and heat into it to dry the moisture out of it. We don't. We let ours feel dry. And that makes, we think, for a better product. We try to get it down to, to 10 or 12 percent. And moisture. that's good for grinding because if you don't have it where it's uh, percentage low, it will clunk up. And that's not a good thing. So we'll let it drop. It's not turning over, falling over yet in the ears. So 
So it'll be end of October, November, and if the winter doesn't hit us yet, we'll let, still let it sit here until we get what we think is uh, enough dry in it, and we'll check it with a meter to make sure that it's dry enough, and then we'll harvest it. Well, uh, I, f I found it interesting because I never knew, even though I grew up in, in Tennessee, I, I never, and ate a lot of corn, I never knew the difference between um, how you, uh, what was the difference between grits and cornmeal that you made cornbread from because we always ate cornbread and cornbread if you if you're there, there's a lady here that's tuning in from Saudi okay. Arabia so she may not know what we think of as cornbread but it, it's cornbread is a batter bread that you just mix up with egg and milk and cornmeal and and, a, and some kind of rising agent and you, you you cook it for like 30 minutes and you just eat it hot and it's delicious and uh, but then grits is something that people eat as almost like a porridge. It's not that liquid, but you, it's a side dish, and it's but it's just like creamed ground corn. So t it, when 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 he showed me the mill originally, the only difference is the the uh, sifter. The that right? The process. We use different screens to sift out different products. We take a coarser screen to take the grits out, and a finer screen to take the cornmeal out. And then the cornmeal uh, is used for that purpose. And then the grits can used to be used strictly for breakfast food forever uh, until about 10 years ago when people discovered grits again. And now it's used a lot in the South for dinner foods, shrimp and grits and all kind of other things can be made out of it. People make a, a breakfast cake out of it. They mix it, put bacon and eggs in it, put it in a shaping dish, put it in the refrigerator, cut it out in the morning, put it in the microwave, heat it up a little bit. And that's a, a great way to eat it also. So it's a good way to get uh, different products out of the corn as far as sifting it out. We also make a corn flour, which is again, a, is another sifting process and polante, which is a real fine grit that a lot of restaurants use. Uh, oh, like polenta? Polenta. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, oh, okay. So that's just a finer version of cornmeal. Oh, fantastic. Well, I just want to turn the camera around for a second so that you can see uh, what the cornfield looks like. So this is, over here we have the, um, this one, right? The, uh, mm -hmm. what's it called? Hickory King. Here we have the Hickory King. It, it looks very similar to me, Tim. I can't really see the difference. And then uh, over at the end, we have the other. Now, does it matter that, that this side of the field is getting more shade? Or does it even out during the day? It evens out during the day because the east is, and the west is over there. So right. it goes across the field. And go over there and show them the weeds and talk about the weeds a little bit. Well, we, we have weeds because we don't use chemicals. And we use very, very limited amount of uh, anything else that's fertilized. We hope the ground is rich enough, and it has been for 50 years because of row cropping changing the, what we do in the soil. And uh, so it's pretty well almost a corn that uh, has very little put into it to uh, keep it and, and make it grow good. So that's why we have weeds, we don't use chemicals. Well, I understand corn is a heavy feeder. You know, when you're in an urban garden, you gotta use a lot of compost to keep corn happy. And so you feel like you have enough nutrition in the soil? We have enough nutrients in the soil because of the crop rotation we put in it. So what do you rotate? We'll rotate uh, hay, as far as the different kinds of uh, hay that we put into it that, that go in the soil. Wheat is another product. You can put into it soybeans, you can plant soybeans, we get another product. Then you can let it sit for a year and then go back and start it again. Okay. Uh, so well, there's a lot of stuff you can plant to, to build up different nutrients in the soil. What, you don't have to use chemicals. What do you plan to do this year? We plan to let this one sit and then uh, we've got another spot we'll probably plant next year uh, that's not been touched and we'll plant it. And then the next year will you plant? Next year or the year after we'll plant this back. Well, Amal is asking um, from Saudi, do, you, do they cross-pollinate? And I had asked you the same question. They would if we plant them at the same time. Uh, these are both 120-day corn, which means when you plant it, it takes 120 days to mature. Uh, like sweet corn is only 90 days. But what we do, we plant them at different times. So they pollinate at different times. So that's why you can plant them next to each other and don't have to worry about that cross-pollination. And do you get enough wind and rain to take care of the pollination? Yes. Yeah, we do. We get plenty of uh, rain this year, and that's, that's one of our biggest things that, to pollinate it. And we've had good rain this year, and we've also have enough wind in this little valley here 
that does it. Uh, and we've had an issue with that one year, and we had to put sprinklers up in the air to spray water on the corn when it was during that process. I remember that. And we were the only ones in the neighborhood that had corn. Uh huh. Well, is it because they didn't know or they didn't want to invest in that? The people just look, well, it's not going to make a crop, and they didn't do it. We were interested in keeping what we had, so we went the extra effort and uh, sprayed it with water uh, above it, sprinklers, and right. cross pollinated, and we had corn. And so, Tim, tell anybody who is interested how they would order your um, corn products if they if they wanted to. Well, they can contact us. Uh, our address, and I think you can post that problem for us. Okay. And uh, can, can we can ship it to them. Uh, okay. We, we're, this year, we hope to have enough seed that we can actually sell some seeds to people. It won't be certified, but because uh, we're not going to go through that process, but uh, it's easy to check it, and we'll check that the old-fashioned way. You take a certain amount of seeds, and you plant them, and see how many come up out of the group basically what they do but we'll do that before we ship any out and that's what won't be till january or february before we even do that so we hope we had enough seed that we can get some people started on a small couple pound bags uh -huh. uh, and let them start playing with the corn oh that's fantastic um and but what is the name of it what are you calling your corn or your corn products you have uh, a name it's called bristol branch millworks right and is that uh, is that the name of the mill also mm -hmm. Okay, tell us, uh, good morning, Pauline. Uh, and if anyone has a question, I can now see the screen. So if you have a question for Tim regarding the corn he's talking about, please give me a question. I have a question. Um, can you tell us why we're not standing in the same field that we were in la uh, when I visited before in 2013? Well, one of the fellows that used this field, which is uh, related to the person that owns it, decided to plant corn in that old section that we used and he went to a co-op and they talked him into planting another type of corn which ended up being the not the GMO corn and uh, so you have to use chemicals to kill the weeds you have to use there's a chemical in the corn uh, they use it for alcohol basis and that's what farmers raise it because it's a high yield crop but we can't use that field for corn back in it for at least three years Wow. The chemical gets out of the ground. Right, so right. It'll kill, it'll kill this corn. Right. Um, well, does, do you, would you say he regrets the decision now? I think he does. He didn't know. He was one of these, he wanted to get into it, the farming, grow cropping, and uh, did it, and then found out that he shouldn't have done what he did. Well, when you say alcohol, you're talking about the, uh, the alcohol for... Yeah. for Fuel. For fuel. The nature of alcohol. Okay. Ethanol. And how many acres of, would you say, do you have any idea in this country how many acres are put into that kind of ethanol growing? I'd be afraid to guess probably millions of acres. Yeah. More than what they, they use in fuel. And that's the bad thing about it because it goes into the animal feed. Right. Talk about that a little bit. Well, animal feed is chickens, of course, the cattle and all that are eating that corn. And that same chemical stays in that corn. Uh, People heard of Roundup Ready. That's the uh, stuff they put in the ground. It soaks into the corn. It gets up into the kernels. And that's why they used to advertise this stuff that you could get more uh, ears of corn out of your field because you would have no worms or bugs in it because it would kill them. Right. Uh, it's still in the grain. Right. Right. So you're determined to keep this uh, tradition alive. Right. Right. That's fantastic. Um, does anybody else have another question for? Hey, Steve. How many acres of this corn to fill the needs of a family harvest to harvest? Yeah, so if somebody wanted to get to order your seed and, and just for their own family farm, uh, how, how much, uh, how many rows would they have to plant in order to? Well, of course, depending on, if they're just going to use it for sweet corn, then they can plant uh, a pound of it. If they're going to use it for other purposes, then they may need two pounds of it. Right. You know, to get what they need out of it. Right. Right. And how many, how, how much would two pounds plant? A half an acre, an acre? Yeah, I have, a quarter of an acre. A quarter of an acre yeah. for two pounds. Yeah. Okay. But it seems like a quarter of an acre for um, a family who is not selling it, right. pro making products to sell would be plenty. Good morning, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, do you have a question for Tim? 
about corn. <laughs> Tracy has a family farm in Pennsylvania. Okay. And she's one of my regulars. Um, let's see. So you, you talked about, you know, the, the my, my understanding is that even with the Roundup Ready, it's the, they still get uh, uh, super weeds and super bugs. Is that happening? Well, the, the Roundup Ready keeps the weeds down in that type of corn. And if we were to use this, spray this like they do, uh, this corn would die because corn is actually a part of a natural grass. It's got, got grass in it, family, and it would just kill it dead. So that's why they modified the corn so they can use the chemical to kill the grass and not kill the corn. I see. Wow, that's complicated. Uh, they went to a lot of trouble. They went to a lot of trouble. <laughs> a lot of trouble and expense, which is why, you know, they want to get their money's worth out of it, I guess. So uh, you're not aware of what these weeds, these particular weeds are. No. This one's Somebody blooming. Somebody probably knows. This is pl blooming right here. That's a oh, wait. morning glory. Oh, 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 that, the morning glory is on this other thing. Mm -hmm. The morning glory is wrapped around this thing, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, so th the morning glory is just a little vine. So, so they, uh, it looks like they coexist nicely because you've got, you got a lot of nice corn, right? And we've got some pretty flowers. And Not you got long. beautiful flowers. So you have your pollinators. You don't need pollinators for corn, right. but uh, to grow corn but you need pollinators for every other reason. <laughs> so does anybody else have a question for Tim? Beautiful purple flowers. So this is just an, kind of a view of what's behind us. Hey, Carolyn, do you have a question? Isn't this beautiful here, everybody? Tim wants me to move down here. Tim and Francis do. Uh, Nunu, good morning. And Tim, she says, thank you for both. Thank you both for this. Um, Nunu, do you have a question for Tim? Tim, can you think of any other uh, inf uh, good information that uh, would be helpful to people? Well, Come over here so that if, you're not in the sun. If they get any of this corn or want to plant any of it, and you can buy it online, uh, especially the Hickory King, uh, you have to plant it about six to eight inches apart because it is a big stalk and it requires a good space. It's a big root ball, which the newer corns, they're planted within an inch apart. So it's very slender ear. You can see these stalks are quite big, and these are some small stalks. If we went down further, they would be anywhere 12, 14 feet high. Now, that storm that came through would knock some of our uh, other corn down, which was the gourd seed corn, but it didn't knock this down. This is very durable, hardy, hardy corn. Wow. Very hard to knock over. Wow. Um, and you were saying you have to plant it six to eight inches apart. Right. Okay. Uh, they're saying they're having a hard time hearing you. Um, uh, well, you just repeat what you just said then um, about how, how you plant it. Plant it about six to eight inches apart. So you've got to give it enough space because it has a big root ball and it's such a tall, big corn that you want to make sure that you're getting all the uh, space it needs to grow. Uh, the newer corns, you can plant them an inch apart because they're very small stalk and they don't require a lot. Uh-huh. So, but these require more. Okay. Great. You want to walk down and just uh, show them the, the length of the field? and. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to walk down and, and take a look at the length of the field. Okay. Why don't you go first, Tim? So it's about, how hot would you say it is, Tim? About 75 right now. It's only about 75. It's, it's 10, 10 something a.m. And um, I think it's supposed to get up to 92 before three o'clock, isn't it? So this is where the corn blew down, right through here. They had a storm, but you can see how huge these ears are. These are about twice the size of mine. Or 
or bigger. And you hand pick it all, right? We hand picked all of it last year. Uh, this year we'll combine it. Oh, really? Uh -huh. So you've got a big combine? Yes, we've got a two row combine. Two row, okay. Not one of those humongous things. No, no, we could turn that thing around in the field. And so, what does the combine do? It just uh, strips the ear off the corn and then shells it. Ah, oh, oh well. Uh, I, I, I almost got that message read, but I didn't get it read because it's on my cell phone. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's, I'm sorry, you said it's what? It, uh, it does what to the, uh, to the two rows? It, it does... picks the two rows at a time. Okay. And, and it just like mows it down? Uh-huh. It cuts it off at the ground and then runs it through, uh, a gathering system and then it strips the ear off and then it shells the corn off of the ear. Wow, it does all of that. Uh -huh, one process. Wow, I mean, I knew the big farms had that, but I didn't know you did that. Well, that's going to be a lot easier for you. I mean, you're not a spring chicken, neither am no. I. <laughs> oh, wow, there's a lot blown down. So I understand when it's blown down, there's, it's called something when it's blown down, isn't it? Does it have a name? We just call it blow down corn. Blow down corn. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it stays off the ground like it is here, it'll pick it. He and said as long as it stays off the ground, you can pick it, even if it's bent over, because it's not broken, so it's right. still getting nutrients from the stem. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if it, if, it, if, it, if it snaps down here, you're done, right? Right. Okay. Anyway, this, uh, everybody, this just seems like a really interesting project to try this major, majorly heritage corn because Thomas Jefferson developed it. Do you till the stalks under after harvest? Do we do what? Till the stalks under, till yes. the ground. Yes, we leave them in the ground and, and till them under. They put nutrients back in the ground. Yes, they do, Carolyn. Uh, um, yes, it's, it's, I'm sorry it's hard to hear, guys. I'm just on my cell phone and I don't know what to do about that, but, um, uh, uh, he says it's, he's tilling it under the ground and it puts nutrients back in the soil. So, yes, they do. Now, have you ever considered just leaving it laying over? Or uh, the machine does too much of the processing? It processes and chops it up. Processes and chops it up. Okay. Well, chopped up is going to put nutrients back into the soil faster, right? Now look at this. Yep. So what would this be? Well, is that the worm is, itself is, right there? And actually, it's a worm come up. That's actually where a crow got into it. Ah. Crows attack it. Yeah. It's strong enough that it'll hold a crow and they'll eat a spot in it. Okay. Well, that's you, but you've got, what is that? That's, that's I've never seen a corn worm. That's a corn worm? Mm -hmm. I've never seen a black corn worm. That's a little one. Oh, how big do they get? Oh, they get pretty big. You mean the, the big ones that you see at the top when they're, yeah. they're all eaten, they're kind of gr mm -hmm. gross? Oh, okay, so that's, a, that's just the larval stage. Right. Uh, I'm sorry I missed that um, comment, everybody. If you have a, a burning question that I missed, please uh, post it again. I mean, you've got a lot blown down here. Yeah. Look at that. What is that sound that we hear? That pee, 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 pee. Locust. That's a locust. Okay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So we've only got an acre here. Uh, both varieties can combined, right? Okay. Well, this is what the countryside in Tennessee still looks like, everybody, if you're interested in buying a farm down here. <laughs> a lot of people are doing that. Uh, leaving California and coming over here or leaving California and going to Idaho, uh, one or the other, it seems like. Looks like we're coming to the end of the field here. 
And what surrounds this? Just more countryside? More countryside. I hear a sound. Oh, was that a locust? Oh, that I saw flying? A what? A locust that I saw flying. Fly. No, they don't. Do they fly? Yeah. Locusts fly. Oh, look at the size of this one. That is huge. Look at that. Can't even get my hand around that. Wow. Okay. Let's go over here into the shade. See if anybody has any other questions. So guys, I'm going to be back. Let's see. Hello, Kay. Kentucky here. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm going to be back in two days, everybody. And I'm going to be doing an update from my garden because I haven't been able to do much in my garden and it needs a lot of work. So we've come to the end of the field here. Did anybody else have another question that I missed? Uh, Nunu, this is in Bonacqua. In, uh, well, we're right now we're in Dixon County. Uh, Travis, I missed that. You have to post it again. It just disappeared. Uh, we're in Dixon County and right on the border of, well, I guess bon Bonacqua is either in one or the other. It's partly in Dixon. This little area here, mail route, is Burns, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, that's Burns. That's where the mill is. That's where the mill is. Wow. Wish we could go over and show them the mill. But, you know, guys, you can, uh, you can, you can go to my video. I'm, I'm having, <laughs> I'm having to re reach for breath because I'm not used to all this humidity. But, um, you can go to my video that I did with Tim back in 2013 and you'll see the mill and he works on the mill and keeps it going. It's one of these old grist mills where they grind the corn uh, with a stone wheel and you can see all about that. Let's see. Uh, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> it is humid. Uh, I don't, I don't know what, I'm sorry, there were like three comments all at the same time and I didn't get, I didn't get a question. Uh, so, everybody, uh, let's see, Travis says, in the past when I've grown corn, I've had problems with ants getting in the, uh, make it shorter, Travis. How much corn should I grow in a four by eight raised bed for good pollination and great harvest, planting, spacing? In a four by eight bed, well, it's got to be one, one, it's got to be square foot gardening, one in each one. Yeah. That's best you can do. Yeah, uh, no, no, you'll be able to see the mill, and I will post that link in, in, unless you can find it before I get there. Uh, Carolyn has already seen it. Carolyn, would you do me a favor and, and find that video real quick and post it in the chat? Uh, Carol, can you please name the two types of corn and how long it, until it is the ripe? Okay, so li list the corn again. Let's see, let, let me get you in the shade. All right. Oh, let me, let me get him in the shade. Uh, see if you can get in the shade. There you go. All right. That's better. This is the big ear, which is the gourd seed. Or and Thomas talk a little Jefferson. bit louder, Tim, start over. Okay, this is the gourd seed corn, or Thomas Jefferson corn. And this is the Hickory King corn. Hickory King and Thomas Jefferson, right. or the gourd seed. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they call this the gourd seed is because you see it's pointy, and when you pull it out, there's a little tail on it, and it looks like a gourd seed. So they developed this, uh, Thomas Jefferson did, mm -hmm. at Monticello. Right. And, in, um, and, and you got it. Tell us again how you found it. A uh, fellow from East Tennessee picked it up at Williamsburg. They were showing it had a bowl of it and he got some seeds and brought it back and planted it and over several years had enough to produce a small crop of it which ended up at a mill in East Tennessee at a friend of mine and he got me some seed. And when you heard about this did you just say oh I got to try that or? I have to try it. <laughs> and why? Why did you want to try it? Well the name of it for one thing it was developed by Thomas Jefferson and after doing a little research with people that had had some before and said it was probably the best milling corn and eating corn. I'll hold it. Let me okay. hold it. So we uh, we had to have some. We've eaten it sweet corn, which is fantastic. Uh, we have not tried it yet as milling corn because we haven't had enough of it until this year. 
Yes, uh, Sher Shirley, yes, we know that. Uh, he, that's what he grows here is um, corn for grinding or field corn, as people call it field corn. She said Hickory King is field corn. And, but you do occasionally eat it sweet and fresh, right? right? Yes, Hickory King, um, Daryl, you can get their products. It's called Bristol Branch, Bristol Branch. Maybe. And uh, hi, Jamila. Jamila is tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, okay. Tobago, sorry, sorry, to, she corrected me. Uh, Daryl, I will post the links under the videos, everybody. What, if any, nutrients does Tim add into his soil for corn specifically? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, the, I missed the second question there. If you want to repost that, I'll look at it. Uh, no, he was talking about he doesn't add anything to the soil because this particular field is very nutritious to start with. And they do till it and turn it under, and then they do crop rotation. So uh, between the crop rotation and letting the fields rest, uh, how, many to how many total acres do you have to work with? We've got about uh, probably 30. Oh, okay. So you, you can let this rest for right. as long as you want because your, your ultimate goal is, is how many pounds? We're going to start off this year, we're hoping with a thousand pounds of uh -huh. product. And then out of that, we'll have enough seed to plant a larger crop of it next year. And tell them how you usually sell this. We sell it. Uh, Good morning. Locally, just to people, restaurants and people that craft shows and things of this nature, the meal and the grits. We do sell some online, but uh, the cost of shipping is too high really to, to it eats it up. So we don't deal too much with that. But right. uh, we're interested more right now in the seed and providing a uh, line for people to get a hold of the seed to raise a small patch of it for themselves. Now, if you guys all heard that, he's they're more interested right now with the uh, gourd seed corn, the John Thomas Jefferson, to uh, produce the seed to sell so that other people can try it and keep the line going. Because this goes back to... Uh, someone was just saying, I did the, 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 I see the, the questions for like three seconds. So I saw your question in my youth, Hickory King was picked as soon as it was ripe and I missed the rest of it. Um, uh, probably because they dried it inside or something, right? Well, they ripe actually means it's in the milk stage. Uh, they used it probably either for sweet corn and then the rest of the corn, they let it lay until it got uh, dry enough to where they could harvest it in the fall. People didn't have combines back then. They just hand-picked everything. Right. And he said, how do you harvest uh, the seed for saving? We do a combine. Then we'll clean it, separate it out. And so we've got a, a clean corn. And that way there's nothing else in it. We run it through a seed cleaner. Somebody said Silver Queen is the best they have ever eaten. But is Silver Queen a... a it's a sweet corn. A it's sweet, like sweet corn. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's not what they're doing, Sherry. They're, uh, because... Uh, Tim, I know you came in late, but Tim, his hobby really is, uh, because he's a retired school teacher, uh, his hobby is re restoring these old grist mills uh, where you grind the corn and keeping these old traditions alive. And I have a video that I did with Steve in 2000, with, uh, with uh, Tim in 2013, and we went to the grist mill and he showed me uh, the mill and where they grind it. And it's, it's the old traditions. And I think the video is called Keeping the Old Traditions Alive. Sorry, I missed that question. Uh, you'll have to repost it. I literally see that for like three seconds. So if, if the question is longer than like six words, I miss it. <laughs> so uh, let's see. He says, I asked to eat butter and sugar corn when I was a kid in Connecticut. Oh, I used to. Butter and sugar corn, have you heard of that one? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes, thank you, Christina. How much corn is lost if growing the corns? Okay, that, that question was too long. I didn't get to read the last part of it. Um, will you link that? Yes, I'll, I'll link that video when I get done, uh, when I get back to uh, connectivity with my laptop. I'll do that. So it, if there are any other questions, just uh, make, make like a six word question so I can see it and I'll have Tim answer it. And otherwise we're gonna go ahead and sign off. 
and uh, head back to the house. Uh, let's see, folks, just to look the video up. Yeah, yeah, if you just go to season one, if you go to my playlist uh, from my homepage, you'll find season one and it's in there. What is the number one lesson, Tim? Okay, guys, if it's more than six words, it's gone. I can't read the whole thing. Put it back on there. <laughs> um, are you talking to Tim or are you talking to me? Somebody wants to know if, if somebody's single. <laughs> um, uh, that's okay. That's okay, Carolyn. They can go to my playlist from my homepage. Let's see. Great work you're doing, Tim. Oh, this is from uh, Deep South with Mr. Tom. He's in Alabama, and he says, great work you're doing. Um, Christina, yes, yes, I know, I know. Uh, okay, anybody else have a question real quick? Did you, did you say 120 days to harvest? Wow. Yes, yes, he did. Uh, number one lesson from Tim for us. Number one lesson, growing corn, I presume, uh, for, for everybody else. What use, would you? Use good heritage corn. And? And. Make sure your field hasn't been sure contaminated. Your field has, hasn't been contaminated. <laughs> don't use any chemicals. Yeah, yeah. You just don't worry about the weeds. Right. Chop them out like they used to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any further questions, you can put them at the bottom. Let's see, how long has Tim farmed this field? Oh yeah, this field is new, right? Right, we've done this in for three years. Three years. Yeah, we were saying earlier, Stephen, that uh, the field that he did uh, plant on, someone in that family used it and put GMO seed in there, so they can't use that for a while. He learned his lesson, and so they're gonna be back to that field maybe in three years or something. You think three years is enough? We'll test it and see. Okay, and how do you test it? Just plant some corn in and see if it'll come up. Uh, Amal says, thank you for the information, Tim. And thank you for doing what you do. And um, you guys, um, thank you for watching my videos. And please remember to hit the like button. And uh, let me know if you enjoy videos like this, where I interview people that know more than I do about stuff, <laughs> about growing stuff. And uh, we'll see you all later. And I'll be sure and, and watch the chat and... Uh, and check back underneath the video and I'll try to answer any questions that I missed. Okay, thanks so much guys. And this person says it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why, does, why don't they leave it up for three? Thank you for the tour. Okay, thanks so much. All right, we'll see you guys uh, uh, from Los Angeles soon enough. Uh, what kind of corn? Yeah, that's all in the beginning. All in the beginning. The two kinds are Hickory King. Hickory King. And, and Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson gourd, seed gourd seed corn, like a gourd. It looks like a gourd seed, and that's why they call it that. It's very unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. And Dubai, thank you so much for t from Dubai. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? And uh, I have a lot of Indian friends as well. I, I, we probably weren't on long enough for everybody to catch on. So thanks, everybody. And please hit the like button before you go. And uh, say bye to Tim from Tennessee for now and from Bon Aqua. And I love you guys. And just keep watching my videos. Please check out my Big Sur videos. If you haven't watched those, I need more views on those videos. So I really appreciate you sharing them. Take care. Love you. Bye.